Hi there. So today we're starting a new chapter of statistical distributions, uh, which is still within the whole realms of probability. It's going to start take us to a place where we can start working out the probabilities of all sorts of really quite strange things. In order to do that, we need to be familiar with one or two slightly different ways of writing down our results. So we're going to be looking at some simple probability today, but some slightly different ways of recording those results, uh, which is what all this stuff over here is starting to point towards. So uh, let's have a look at it. So here's our various terms. At some point you might want to pause the video and, and just make a note of these in, in your book. So we've got, um, we've got our random variables um, and they are just variables whose value depends on the outcome of a random event. So we've got an example here of rolling a dice. So if you rolled a dice, the there are six different variables that could have um, your variable could have six different values, one, two, three, four, five, or six. A sample space is just a diagram that has got the range of variables in it, um, and you'll have been used to doing those before with two dice, say where you've got one, two, three, four, five, six down one side and across another. Uh, and then you've also got a discrete variable. So a discrete, just as with discrete data, can only take certain values, it means the variable can only take those certain values. So an example of that is here. If you were to roll a dice, the probability, the, the things that can happen are you can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. And the probability of each of those things is a one in six chance. So that's what that means. It's called a mass function because they're all massing in together on the same thing. Probability table. You've got all your values that can be taken. And then on the line below, we're saying what the probability of that thing is of happening. And then you could show that as a diagram, like a lot of little bars or a little line, um, line chart showing that up to one sixth. That's all it is. Let's start to have a look at how that can be with one or two slightly different situations. Here's our first question. If three coins are tossed, write down all the probabilities. This is something we've done a long time ago called listing outcomes back in key stage three. Uh, so you could have had three heads. You could have had two heads and a tail. I'll let you see if you can find the rest. You should have eight. And you could have these. So there are four where the first coin is a head, four where the first coin is a tail, and all the different possibilities that you could have in between. And all of those are equally likely to happen. Here comes the second part of the question. So we're now going to show the same information in two different ways. The first one as a table will be more normal um, in some ways, but still will be one or two things slightly different about it. So, so I'm going to have the number of heads is what they're asking us about. So number of heads and then we're finding out what the probability of x is. We've got this slightly strange way of writing it. Probability of cap x as a capital equals x as a small. Then the number of heads possible is 0, 1, 2, or 3. So we've got four different amounts of heads. We've got eight outcomes, but only four in terms of how many heads, and they're not all the same chance of happening. No heads, it only happens if you get three tails, so that's one in eight. One head can happen one, two, three times. And two heads is when you only have one tail, so that also happens three times. And three heads, well that only happens once out of the eight. And if we add those together, one, four, seven, we've got eight all together. So that's that. Now, a probability mass function is um, going to look a little, a little stranger. We had something a bit like it in the first uh, 
part that I showed you, but when you've got more results and they've got different probabilities, it um, we, we need to combine it all using one of these sort of multi-bracket jobs like that. Because we've got three different, what we're worried, thinking about now is we're not defining, first of all, the number of heads, we're defining the different probabilities we could have. So we could have, um, we've got a one in eight chance that x equals zero or three, haven't we? Those two are both one. We've got the other two things that can happen are one and two. And then that's everything, isn't it? So, but you can imagine something else. But in terms of if we've actually flipping the three coins, there's no chance of anything else happening. So you could put something down like otherwise for zero. So here's a nasty little problem. Write this down. Pause the video, have a think about it. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to consider what is this K? It, I mean, it's at first you, you definitely think to yourself, well, they've told us it's biased, but they haven't told us how biased it is. So you've got to really look at the symbols that we've got going on. They've said that the number of the bottommost face, number on the bottommost face is modelled as x. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little table, and then we're going to think about what's going on here. So the probability is being modelled as that. Now, if we go for the number on the face, um, the number on the bottommost face, well, that's x. So we've got four different numbers, one, two, three, and four. By the way, if you're thinking, what's a four-sided dice look like? It's a tetrahedron, a triangular bottomed thing. So they're saying that there's one number on each of those triangles. And so we're thinking about the number that's on the bottom. And they're saying that the probability for each face is k divided by whatever the number is on the bottom of the face. Don't know why, but it just is. K divided by 2. K divided by 3 and 4. So the most likely number for it to land on is 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4, because we're dividing by um, ever bigger numbers. And we need to work out what K is. Well, the one thing we do know is what happens when we add them all up. All these probabilities must add up to one, mustn't they? Because they are all the things that can happen. So let's write that out then. Um, k over one plus k over two plus k over three and k over four is all gonna add up to one. Hmm, what can we do now? Can we factorize it? We kind of can because if I take a factor of k outside of here, what would I times k by to get k divided by 1? Well, that's just 1, isn't it? What do I times it by to get a half? I'd times it by a half. What would I times it by to get a k divided by 3? I'd times it by a third. And a quarter to get k over 4. So, now, what do all of these add up to? You can use your calculator if you like. But if you add a half and a third and a quarter and a whole, you get you get 25 over 12, don't you? So we could say 25 over 12k equals 1. So if we divide 1 by 25 over 12, we get 12 25ths. So that's our value of k. Okay, a bit more questions coming up. Okay, so now we're wanting the probability distribution of x in table form. Pause the video and see if you can do that. All it is, is replacing the k in there with what it should be. So,
when we come to 1, if we put 12 25ths divided by 1, well, that is going to be 12 25ths, isn't it? If we divide that by 2, that would be 6 25ths. Let's go for 6 25ths. I was going to go for 12 50ths, but that'd be nicer. Then if we go for uh, dividing it by 3, that would uh, we could divide 12 by 3, couldn't we, and get 4 25ths. And when we get to 4, uh, we would just have 3 25ths. And we double check that these all add up to 25 25ths, and they do. So it's all adding up to 1. Final part for this question. Pause the video and find the probabilities for those three situations. Number one, this is saying, what's the probability that uh, x is bigger than 2? So it's those two, isn't it? 4 plus 3 out of 25 makes 7 out of 25. Bigger than 1, but less than 4. That means 2 or 3, doesn't it? 6 plus 4 makes 10 out of 25. And the last one, bigger than 4. Well, it can't be bigger than 4, so that's 0. Right, here's our last example before we, we do some other general questions. So take your time, copy it down, uh, have a go, just to let you know these are all meant to be exactly the same size. So there's uh, two out of the five are red and they're all the same chance as each of the individual fifths there. Okay, so pause it, give it a go. So this one to make you think a little bit. The spinner's spun until it lands on red or has been spun four times in total. We need to find the probability distribution um, of the random variable s, the number of times the spinner is spun. So in the end, what I'm wanting to do is say it might be spun, how many times it's spun is called s, isn't it? It could be spun just once, because it could go on red. It could go on, be the second time that it goes on red. It could be the third time it will not be spun more than four times. And under here, we just need to have P brackets capital S equals little s. So that's going to be my distribution as a table that I'm going to fill out once I've worked it all out. So first up, let's think about the simplest thing, the chart probability that it's only spun once. So the probability that it's spun once is just going to be, well, there's five equal chances, aren't there? It's just going to be two-fifths. What about that it's spun twice? Well, it has to be spun blue the first time, doesn't it? And then the second time, it has to be red. And those are two independent events, so we multiply them together. Three twos are six, five fives are twenty-five. What about three? Well, if it's going to be three, it must have been blue the first time, it must have been blue the second time, and then it must have been red. So there's no chance of it being in a different order, because as soon as red comes up, that's the end. So five times five times five is one, two, five. Three threes are nine, times two is eighteen. Now, the probability that it happens to be four could end up being multiplied. It could be blue or it could be red on the fourth time, couldn't it? It doesn't matter. So the probability that s equals 4 is going to be 1, because it's all the rest of the things that can happen. Take, you got your 2 fifths plus your 6 twenty fifths plus your 18 120 fifths. They all actually add up to make uh, 98 out of 125, you take that away from the 1, and it leaves you with 27 1 2 fifths. So that is the end of that. Okay, so not as tricky as it may have looked at first. Right, we're going to have some exam style questions to uh, have a go at. Right, we're just going to do three questions. So here, here comes the first one, just a short one. Pause the video, give it a go. So when it comes to showing that that's one tenth, start off by just drawing a nice little probability um, 
table. So you've got probability x equals x, the actual probability of it, and then we've got the things that can happen. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 can happen. And according to our little formula for how to find the probability, k times the actual result is that probability. A bit bizarre, but it is. Um, they, like, they like asking these just because uh, it's about showing you know how the format works, I suppose. Then 2k for 2, 3k for 3, and 4k for 4. Now, all of the probabilities with any random variable are always going to add up to 1. So you've got k plus 2k plus 3k plus 4k is equal to 1. And then all you have to do is say that that's 10k is equal to 1, and then therefore k equals 1 tenth. And that's that done. Second question. Pause it and give it a go looking to find the value of k. So again we've got to look to set up our little table about what would be happening. So we've oh, running out of space there. So um, we've got our x, we've got our probability x equals x and then we're going to be having 1, 2, 3, and four are our four possible things. Now, strangely, for one and three, we've got this. So it's oh, k times one being k for one. And for three, it's k times three, which is three k. For two, though, it's one less than x. So it's one less than two, which is one. So k is also that. And for four, it's one less than four. So that's also three k. Now all these k's are going to have to add up to 1. So we've got 3 plus 3 is 6, and 2 more makes 8k is equal to 1. Therefore k is equal to 1 divided by 8, or 0.125. The probability that x is bigger than 1, well it's all of these others. So there's 7 eighths left there. So you could say it's 1 take an eighth, which is 7 eighths, or you could do an eighth plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths is 7 eighths. Either way, that's what it is. Final question. A little bit more to this. This is like that other example we had a couple of minutes ago. So the probability distribution in table form. Well, before I can do that, I'm just going to go through and say, well, what's the chance that a head appears first? So the probability that S equals 1 is going to be 2 thirds, isn't it? Because 2 thirds of the time it's a head. Probability that it's two tosses that we do is going to have to be a tail on the first one and then a head. So that is 2 ninths. And the third one is going to be tail times tail times head, which is going to still give us two on the top, but another three times, uh, that's going to be nine times nine is, what have I done wrong there? No, I should have been two thirds, that's it. So that should be two over 27. Now, we're going to have our probability distribution looking like this. We'll need S on the top and we need um, probability S equals S. I'm using S because that's what they told us to do there. I don't know why they decided it should be S, but they did. So we've got one, two, three, and four. So one is two thirds, two is two ninths, three is two twenty sevenths, four is going to be the rest. So quickly to work out what that would be, out of twenty seven, nine threes are twenty seven, so nine twos are eighteen, three nines are twenty seven, so three twos are six. Add up all of those, twenty four, that gets you to twenty six out of twenty seven. So there's only one twenty seventh left over for four. And that's that. So that's our main marks. Final question, what's the probability that 
S is greater than 2, the number of tosses is more than 2, well, it's that one or that one. So it's 2 over 27 plus 1 over 27, which is 3 over 27, otherwise known as 1 ninth. Okay, I hope that made some sense. Uh, until next time, folks, cheerio.